all of those, all of the ways that we create the way to get around. cities to be closer to each other, to make things convenient for us, I just find, you know, off the grid interesting. And the city planner doesn't even know about those. They do know they don't do anything. They actually help a neighborhood. I mean, they really do. And, and their economic booms as well. I, mean, I think they're, so that to me, so I'm going to go take one of those Latino locals over with her. She lives in Edgewater, a couple blocks from the water. Okay. And I'm gonna say, we're going to go get a new city. And this is coming up in like two weeks. I mean, oh, wow, that's exciting. Because I haven't done it. To me, it is. To me, it is. Like, I was a travel writer for a long time. Okay, I noticed that. I saw that you were, um, do you do the travel for the daily well, news? Or is that no, different? I do, I do. I mean, I do occasional travel uh, article if I get a chance. I, did it for so, I was a travel writer for so long that I had a 10-year column for oh. Fromers. Okay. Which okay. is actually located in Hoboken. Right, right. Okay. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they're right in that uh, downtown. Exactly. Yeah. They're the yeah. buildings with the two uh, mm-hmm. with the, with triangles on top. Yeah. So yeah. it's horrible for me because I'd always look across the river on Sunday, like my deadline's tomorrow. It was like I had this constant reminder of like the work you have to do. It was like across the river from where I live, which I live here. So it was kind of wild. But I mean, Hoboken, it was amazing. It was a great experience because, you know, I started, I didn't, I didn't help them once the site, but I was like, yeah, I just, just a shy or a black tea. Um, yeah, what about it? So, I mean, before I took the Daily News job, I was doing kind of more exotic locations. Okay. Morocco, New Zealand, uh, really wild places, but also like, I mean, I lived overseas for a while. Okay. I don't know if you saw my bio, but like, I got lucky. When I was 19, I lived in yeah. Hong Kong for like four months. When I was 22, I moved to Paris. I turned down a job with a, with a consulting company here. And my parents were like, you know, you pay, you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know I mean? they, yeah. they gave me like, they said, well, we're here for a safety net, you know. Right. But, the rest but this is on you. Right. And yeah. that, but I love that. I worked at, I, I attended bar, I carried the golf courses, I did all, I taught English, I did all I could do in this country and those countries to, to survive. Right. But, you know, when you're 19 years old and you're in Hong Kong and you got to find a place to live. Mm. You learn, and, you, and you don't speak that much of the language or a word of it. You learn pretty quickly how to maneuver around a city. Yeah. Yeah. So that and, must be. Um, but it doesn't sound so exotic because what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is this: is like to me, Jamaica Queens or New York City is equally as exotic, interesting, deep, profound, fascinating, full of stories as any of these other places I've ever been in my life. Uh, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's the point that I really want the show to convey. Okay, that's kind of what I. Uh, but you know what? It's interesting because as I watch the show. Yeah. Um, and, and got a feel of, I could see why it won the Emmy, but I want to get your take on why, how, what you sure. felt won the Emmy. Well, I think the, I think the star, as much as anything else, is Hoboken mm-hmm. and Jersey City. I think, I mean, if you look at it visually, first of all, the person who shot it, the, D, the director of photography, right. and I don't remember his name, it was Chris something, Alan can give you his last name. Okay. He, was, he, he was like, he does films, and he, he was That's just, had that he, he was down on, he was down on, yeah, he was down on his knees, he was doing shot, he was testing light from six to eight different directions, I mean, this guy was like, this guy was fantastic. And I think the star of the show are the locations. Like, to me, like, I don't you look at the Hoboken and the, and the townhouses, mm. you look at Stevens College, you look at Jersey City downtown, you look at Hamilton Park, Van Borst Park, you look at the waterfront that views of New York, you take a look at the people who live there every day, yes. and you see the impact that the place has on them. Hoboken is a, is a beautiful place. It really is. And Jersey City has pockets of real beauty and pockets of real urban nature, um, right. in a way, and uh, commercial growth. And, you know, when you write about these things every day for seven, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen years, you really start to, and I don't want this to sound bragging because it's not, it starts to feel like the Matrix. You know, at the end of the Matrix, the one where he sees the dots, but he doesn't have to go in anymore. He, he's almost, it's almost, it's almost like you, you get such a handle for where you are mm-hmm. in the world, in a city, in a neighborhood, in micro, microscopically, also in a, on a corner, that you kind of understand, like, what we... You get the feel for it. You feel the emotion of the place. You feel the history of the place. You feel the drive of the place. You feel why people live there. Why it's so expensive. Well, Hoboken is not cheap. Yes, it isn't. And and Jersey City. And, Jersey City is and, not and certain, cheap. And certain parts of Jersey City. Oh, because God. then you in the fact that you and I like the fact that you you mentioned the different pockets because the program itself did show a, it, it just showed a, a certain You're right. showed a certain view of Jersey right. City. Jersey City is vast. It's vast. And, no, I'm, I'm looking for some uh, sweet love or something. Here it is. Oh no, sweet love. Oh, okay. No, 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 I'm cool. I'm easy. Very easy. 
So, yeah, you're right. Exactly. I mean, listen, I would like to have two hours to shoot those episodes. But that wouldn't have been, <laughs> that wouldn't have been, the, the, it wouldn't have been the star appeal. Yeah, right. And I think, right. you know, right. the, the star appeal and the way it was presented, and I guess it was because of the, 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 the director that well, shot Well, the director of photography did a great director. job. But it was the people that, that were chosen as well. I mean, okay. this was like, this was a total team effort. And this, this came together because of a great producer, a great director, you know, a great director photographer and a host who wasn't just a television personality or was doesn't come from a television background. Well, I just in you know I did some television. I've done video like for the Daily News. I've done television. I used to do neighborhoods for Channel Eleven, like sometimes occasionally, like on a show they had. So I had experience in front of the camera. I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, you it, and it and it showed because well, here's you the have an enthusiasm with neighborhoods, and that's what that's what's about. That's what it was about, and I think it really there could be a camera right here, right, here, right now. I act the same way. If you put me if we take a walk on the street, if you put me somewhere any neighborhood I've never been to, and my favorite thing about my job for a very long time was going to a different location, like a Jamaican Queens, a Flushing, um, a Clinton Hill, you know, a, um, um, a Sheep's Head Bay, a uh, Hunts Point, where you, the, the, where you take the subway, right, and you're underground, mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're going to see when you hit that top step, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't know what people you're going to see, you have an idea, but you're not sure, you might have seen pictures before, but you don't have a clue what how that energy is going to feel, what the flow of that part of the city is going to be like. Trucks, buses, cars, you don't know. Streets, you, I mean, you have an idea, but you, you've never been there before. So for me, that's the same thing as walking around a souk in Marrakesh. There's no difference. And that's what I think people have to understand. That's what I want people to understand about their own environment. You know, E.B. White, the great New York writer who wrote Here is New York, talked about how the neighborhoods, you can walk two blocks away and be in a totally different place. We don't, ex we don't, ex we don't, I'm sorry about that. We don't, hello? That's okay. um, I'm going to turn this off. We don't really do, we don't explore the way we used to because we don't have to. And, you know, that's, that's, Terrible. We need to. This. I mean, I took a friend for the first time. It was a an older gentleman from Manhattan who does some incredible things with eco building and efficiency testing, and very well known guy in, in New York uh, photography circles. He never really. He, he's never really been to certain parts of Brooklyn. And we were looking at something he was doing in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And went to a little tiny restaurant called Vinny Iolio, which is this tiny little spot where in a 120-year-old pharmacy. And they, didn't, and they didn't change any of the fixtures. They kept it exactly as it is. And there are 